system. <coughs> Just a scan. No. What is the name of the system? Integumentary system. system. So what does it all include? Yeah. Skin, hair, and the nails. Together we call it, so integument as such refers to the skin, but when you call it the integumentary system, So when you look at the skin, some parts of the body, you have thick skin like your palm and sole compared to the rest of the body. So they call it <coughs> thin skin. Uh, there's only one layer that's going to be missing uh, in the thin skin versus thick skin. We'll see that. So what can you think of when you think of as functions of the skin? Obvious ones without having to see in the book. Protection. Protection. Sensory. Sensation. Cooling. Hmm? Cooling. Body health. Uh, temperature regulation. So that's all you have. Uh, protection that comes under one and two, resistance to trauma, infection, other barrier functions. Skin is the first line of defense, right? And uh, because we have a lot of keratin, a protein, if you look under point one, uh, they have mentioned keratin. Keratin is a waterproofing protein that prevents water or water-based substances to get inside. So a lot of infection are spread through water bone, right? So uh, then we also make vitamin D besides sensation, thermal regulation, and because the skin sculpts, helps us to make facial expressions. It's involved also indirectly in communication. But when you look at the skin, you can use figure 6-1. You have the three layers, basically, to start with. <coughs> the middle one is what? Dermis. Dermis, and below that? Hypodermis, and above? Is your epidermis, which again is made of five separate <coughs> layers, but to, con to prevent confusion between layers and layers, so we we'll call it what? Stratum, strata. And within each stratum, you have either one layer or multiple layers of cells. Okay, if you have done the lab already, you have seen that. So let's look at the different uh, strata in figure 6.3. So the first one, can somebody help me here? Basal. Basal. Next. Um, scale, uh, spinal, yeah. Um. have said this to you guys to remember those different strata oh, top to bottom okay basis of the bottom <coughs> podium is crown and the top and others are in between but this lucidum you find only in thick skin like palm and soul otherwise you see the other four and the type of tissue what <coughs> kind of tissue we have here the generic term we already talked about the epithelial tissue. Why don't you look up the shape of the cells? You should be able to tell. Does it look like cube-like or column or what? Squamous. Flat. Flat. Thank you. So depending on whether it's single layer or multiple layers, we are going to call them either What kind? If you have only one layer of cells, simple, simple or stratified. stratified. So your stratum basal is 
simple squamous lucidum also <coughs> the rest are all stratified <coughs> squamous meaning multiple layers the basal stratum has two kinds of cells one we call melanocyte and the other keratinocyte besides some other cells that help in defense melanocyte produces what from the name what can you assume melanin melanocytes produce a compound it's a pigment that gives skin coloration melanin so the function it gives skin coloration and uv protection you'll see in a little bit the different types of melanin when you look in the book this one u melanin and po melanin depending on the composition of this u melanin and po melanin this gives darker tone this gives lighter tone and the combination gives the other ranges in between very light or very dark and also it's influenced by the sunlight so depending on which part of the earth you live what kind of temperatures and light you are exposed the skin coloration will be different the keratinocyte produces a protein called keratin it's not a pigment pigments give coloration this protein provides waterproofing provides what waterproofing so normally water doesn't get into the skin right so if you look under the epidermis under the section on cells of the epidermis you see keratinocytes melanocytes before that you see stem stem cells stem cells can become any of the different kinds of cells everywhere in our body the starting cells are the stem cells which differentiate or develop into either your keratinocytes melanocytes or the other kind of cells like number 4 and 5 tactile cells merkel or tactile cells that uh, help with sensory perception and you have dendritic uh, cells which uh, are phagocytic meaning uh, they eat unwanted bacteria and other <coughs> unwanted substances once something gets into the skin before even the immune system the more specific immune system is activated so these are the different types of cells you find in the epidermis then coming to the layers Uh, the stratum basal already discussed about that it's it's a simple squamous meaning one layer of cells and when these cells divide by cell division what is the process of cell division called uh, mitosis so when they divide the older cells are pushed up the youngest the new cell stays back and keeps dividing the older seeds cells keep migrating through all these different strata as they keep migrating what is happening is <clears throat> they start getting filled up with more and more keratin and by the time they come to the granulosum uh, there's a lot of keratin and when it comes to the corneum it's just nothing but keratin fully uh, filled with keratin okay and also the cells start losing shape and they start dying Uh, from granulosum all the way up to corneum corneum has only dead cells okay so that's why you keep losing the skin cells and also if you your hair when you go to the barber you don't jump in your seat because they are dead cells that they uh, you get clipped <laughs> but the number of uh, layers can vary uh, in this case <coughs> you may have uh, 10 layers here 5 layers here 
and here you can have 15 to 30. So they are multiple <coughs> layers. So that's why they call them uh, stratified uh, squamous epithelium. The granulosum has five. This has up to eight to 10, three to five. This is 15 to 30. So I do this just for convenience so you can easily remember 10, 5, 15, twice that is 30, right? Those numbers are easy to remember that way. Lucidum you'll find only in thick skin. So make sure you read through the different strata as to what is happening. Then we will come to the middle section, which is your dermis, the layer. So the dermis is made up of dense connective tissue. It's one of the fibrous connective tissue. If you'll see in the model, you'll see these wavy lines. Those are the fibers, the collagen fibers. And then this has two layers within the dermis. You have, you can divide it almost like halfway. The lower one they call reticular. And the upper one they call papillary. Why they call papillary layer, can anybody help me here? This portion, papillary. What do you find on the superior surface of your, the superior layer of the dermis? You finished your lap with papillary, yeah, papillary layer, thank you. I mean, you have dermal papillae, the finger-like projections under which you'll find your sensory touch receptors. And these finger-like projections are called papillae because they are found on the dermis, they also call them dermal papillae. That's why that layer is papillary layer. And here, reticular means, think of your reticular type of uh, connective tissue, full of fibers, right? Thick fibers compared to areolar. Then the third, this is the hypodermis. This is pretty simple and straightforward. It's mainly filled with what kind of tissue? Adipose tissue. It's full of fat-containing cells. The fat is called adipose. The tissue is called adipose tissue. And the cells are called adipocytes. <coughs> depending on which one you are talking about. Adipose tissue, adipose is inside, adipocytes, the whole cell. Besides that, there is some gap in between the adipose tissue that's filled with uh, uh, areolar tissue. Remember the areolar tissue with some fibers and some cells. So this is the reason we discuss these tissue ahead of this chapter, okay? The epithelial and the connective tissue. Cartilage tissue will do with the bones and the muscular tissue with muscles and so on. And if you see, uh, you see the word subcutaneous fat, sometimes they call the hypodermis also subcutaneous layer below the skin meaning below the skin, we <coughs> normally call skin what you see outside the epidermis. Sub subcutaneous, so a lot of the uh, injections are given subcutaneously in this layer. Skin color, I mentioned about the eumelanin and pheomelanin, the two types of melanin compounds produced by the melanocytes. Besides that, you also have two other substances that add to the coloration. This is either dark or lighter, light or dark, right? This one, very dark, uh, light, 
hemoglobin and carotene. Okay, hemoglobin and carotene add to the color variations. Hemoglobin, think of the blood. What color? Carotene, think of the carrot. Yellow to orange. So while we are discussing <coughs> about that, let's go to figure 6, 8, page 192, and then we will come back. So in figure 6, 8, you can see the variations in the hair color <coughs> from left to right. So if you look at the cross section of each hair, you will see the colored and lighter regions, right? <coughs> so the darker colored cells are there, meaning your hair is a little darker, right? So the composition, whether it's more or less, the U melanin is more, your hair is darker. If it's less, it's uh, lighter or it's blonde if you hardly have any U melanin, right? or it's gray. This cortex and medulla is good to know these words because it's going to keep coming back to you in many places. Cortex is generally the outer region, medulla is the middle region in any section and many structures. So middle, middle medulla. It's easy to relate, right? Cortex is that surrounds. Okay, let's go back to 188, where they talk about some of the different conditions with uh, skin color. If you have a bluish skin, maybe from some injury or you hit some place, the bluishness they call cyanosis. Cyano means blue. Erythema, if you have red coloration in the skin, that condition they call erythema. Erythrocyte is red blood cell, right? Erythro means red. Where is our book? Mm -hmm. What do you mean by the, the red and orange? Where does that come from? What's that? The red and orange. These are other compounds that you find besides eumelanin and pheomelanin that give those additional color combination to your skin besides this. These are the primary compounds, but you may find these too. These are different skin conditions, like when your skin looks bluish in some part, reddish or yellowish, or uh, no color or colorless. Uh, so cyanosis is bluish, erythema, reddish, could be from hot weather, exercise, sunburn, anger, and so on. Uh, pallor is a pale or ash color. Albinism <coughs> is when you have lack of melanin, like the gray color, or totally colorless. Uh, jaundice. Jaundice is when you have yellow coloration, like your bile juice is not being moved around, there is accumulation of bile, then you can have the condition. And hematoma, when you have clotted blood, then they call it hematoma. have some markings on your skin, like the lines you see where you flex your palm, flexion lines, and you have freckles, moles. Freckles are uh, more flat compared to the mole, it's more elevated. Okay, let's look at the hair and the nail. Your hair 
starts from here all the way extends to the outside. So I'm going to draw it here and you can look up the book. So the bottom portion looks like a bowl. So we call it bowl. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> and whatever is projecting outside that you can touch and feel, call it shaft. Whatever is inside, we call it root. So you have a bulb, shaft, and root. The pair follicle is the actively dividing region, meaning the cells are dividing, and the older cells, they are dying as they come up. So the follicle is within the bulb. <coughs> and attached to the head, you will find a gland that secretes oil or oily secretion called sebum. So the gland is going to be called sebaceous gland. And then you will find a tiny muscle that helps to make your hand, hair stand erect. They call it pilo erector or erector pili muscle. I don't know what they call in your book. Pilo erector muscle. The keratin we talked about in the beginning, the waterproofing protein, it can be either soft in texture or hard, uh, depending on where you find it. Like in the nail, they call it a hard keratin versus soft keratin. So sometimes people say hair follicle, you have to think that's more specifically the actively growing region, not the whole hair. Okay. So you can see under hair on page 190, you can see the hair gets the name pilus or pili and the uh, region where the cells grow from, uh, there's a tube-like structure within <coughs> the bulb, that's what the hair follicle is. And then the baby hair they call lanugo, and the adult hair they call vellus. <coughs> As it grows, the baby grows, and then they finally they call uh, terminal hair, which is much coarser that you find in the eyebrows, for example. Uh, the hair, hair structure, I already discussed that the bulb root and shaft has a medulla cortex inside. We saw that picture earlier. If you cut it open, you will see the cortex on the outside. The middle portion is your medulla. Matrix is just the base. Yeah, just the background structure. What page you're on? 190. Where is that? Hair, hair matrix is the general area that you see surrounding the follicle that forms the bulb. Let's look at the nail. What are the functions of the hair before we go to the nail? Protection, sensation, and temperature regulation. The hair keeps your body temperature inside to some extent. 
the all people get hotter faster. Uh, the nail, the nail structure you can see on figure 610. Uh, you have the body in the middle of the nail. Then you have a free edge that you clip normally. You clip all the way up to the body, you'll be screaming. And the little depression around the nail, that's your nail fold, where it's folding into the skin. And the <clears throat> nail groove is the groove that surrounds. And the little whitish area at the base of the nail, that's called lineal. And the little bit of skin that you have, this cuticle, like a little raised area behind that. And look at, let's look at the glands, the two different types of glands, one we already discuss the sebaceous gland that secretes the oily <coughs> sebum. It's primarily made up of fatty substance, like a natural moisturizer. And the other gland that you find is your sweat gland, but we have to call it by a different name. We know we have sweat glands, so if you see in page 195, what is the term for that? Pseudoriferous gland. So they start from inside the skin and extend all the way up to the surface. If this is the surface of your epidermis, the corneum, so they release the sweat over here. So this is your sweat gland. And we call it pseudoriferous gland. And it secretes, instead of sebum, it secretes sweat. It's made up of water and some salts that are excreted by the body. So the composition is different. It's more watery. And these sweat glands, depending on where you find them, they call it either hippocrine or neurocrine. Neurocrine is most common all over the body. The apocrine you find in the genital areas, groin, anal region, axilla, and areola. We did the sebaceous glands. Then you have mammary glands that secrete milk to feed the baby. And then also in your ear, you have another type of glands that secrete the ear wax, ceruminous gland. And the ear wax is called cerumen. Okay, I'll give you a few minutes, maybe five minutes. I want you to look over what we did so far. If you have any questions or if you want to 